Thank you. From my point of view, all citizens have the right to be treated with decency and feel secure. That's why I, as a social worker, work with, with the things I do in, in Odense, a city with 200,000 inhabitants. Frequently, for a few weeks ago, my day at the office was to sit in my car five hours watching social excluded how they moved around, how their activities was, how their mobility was. For the average citizen uh, with a meeting with a social excluded often uh, triggers a feeling of inconvenience or fear. This is because social excluded remind us about the shortcoming as a society. The standard reaction is therefore very often denial or out of sight, out of mind. And the stereotypical image of a social exclusive is very often a bum or a faceless person. But there will always be groups of social excluded citizens. And they will meet and they will gather at the train station or at the, at the harbor. And somebody else would think they should not be there, but they should be there. Well into my observation, I got a call from the local police. They told me that they got a call from one of the social excluded, and they felt them threatened with, with my observation. The police joked and asked, what are you doing? I told them that I was on job, and uh, I was looking at this group to observe and to learn something more so we could make better possibilities for their life in the city. When I drove back, I was uh, thinking, what, what happened here? And uh, let, me let me explain what I think happened. I represent the city authorities. It took a very short time to become a suspect in the eyes of the social excluded. Normally, we would expect it was the uh, included who felt uh, threatened. But in this situation, it was the socially excluded. And I think they made this call because they had an area they felt were well, their area. And I also feel it's a success that they contact the police because normally they don't contact the police. They, it's another kind of contact they have. The police had to waste resources, or resources because we didn't fully inform them about our project. And the purpose to observe excluded people, well, kind of almost socially excluded itself. The background for this story and for the specific initiative I'm going to tell about is for a while ago, we had a group of socially excluded persons who went to a sanctuary. This sanctuary closed because we had to build an underground parking place that wasn't built a new sanctuary. And the group of social excluded made a camp in front of a school. And then the school children and the parents had to pass through this group. And on a daily basis, they had to witness uh, drug abuse and alcoholics. This situation made the kids and the parents and the school teachers feel uneasy. And it rem reminded the socially excluded about their negative image among the rest of the society. All in all, this is not sustainable in any respect. But I think we can make Odense the city a better and safer place for all. Inclusion is a key word for our city. We believe all citizens have the right to feel secure in their urban environment. So how can we make it happen? It's all about how we meet the needs of different persons. Socially excluded persons are by no means a homogeneous group, but rather fragmented in terms of background and composition. For example, drug addicts and alcoholics. The city moves are dynamics, and groups are often formed ad hoc just as they're dissolved very fast. 
The dynamics are basically that of a herd instinct or mentality. If the socially excluded hear about conflicts or sales of promotion relevant within their community, they will gather. This is a very typical human instinct. And in fact, just the same type of behavior you will find at opposite spectrum at society, namely among finance investors at the stock market. The road to develop better solutions, preventing conflicts, and establish security for all is to accumulate more knowledge about socially excluded people and their city moves. Why? Because we wish to adjust to the realities and to offer services and solutions to prevent conflicts and avoid that insecurity arises. How can we learn more? Simply by using modern technology. With GPS tracking of the mobility of socially excluded groups, we think we will be able to uh, help to reduce some of the problems I have illustrated. We hand out a device like this, and we use it to track 20 socially excluded persons for a week. Tracking is made frequently to create a picture of the changes in the group's use of the city. The project is done in partnership with an NGO called King's Corsair, who is in charge of daily handouts and collecting of the GPS tracking devices. The daily shifts of GPS devices gives that none of the staff in King's course here knows who had which tracking device. We thought it would be a problem to find somebody that would go with a GPS device, but we have already learned that the group of socially excluded really want to attend in this project because they truly believe if we will create less, it will create less conflicts and offer them better solutions. How do we use the collected data and turn it into meaningful information? We, we made our first monitoring last week, so it's very new, and we haven't analyzed our results yet. But this is some examples on how and which kind of knowledge we will have. This is a 20 person moving inside a very short time. They are very dynamic in their moves. This is one person we can see how he's moving from the one side to another side of the city. It's something like five or six kilometers. And then we have these 20 persons. We put them into what we call a grid, where we have this person, and then we have all the rest of them. And this one shows there's very few people in a day in that area. There, there are more. And there, it's one hotspot for them. So there, we might have some kind of offers for the group of socially excluded. So we are sure that we can create more secureness in that area. To the average citizen, it sounds rather like a simple issue. Why don't you just build some sanctuaries and then say they have to go there? Apart from the fact that it doesn't solve anything, then it misses totally the underlying complexity of city planning. As an image, you may think on the first day in a new office. You go into your office, and you see where the lamp is, where the table is, and where the PC is. And you think, that's not good. I want to reorganize. And then um, you have to consider the same office. But the fact that the lamp, the table, and the PC are connected with wires. Then it gets, suddenly it gets complex. And you have, cannot move the lamp without considering the consequences. It's the same with the social excluded in the city. For similar reasons of complexity, we cannot just e isolate the problem of socially excluded groups and pretend it has no impact to other stakeholders and the functionality of the city. What um, do we learn from this initiative and from the ongoing process? No, no, no matter how noble our intention is for doing good things as a city, we have to involve all stakeholders in our project to create a success. We have learned that if it succeeds for us to create 
offers the places where people go in the city and build sanctuaries, the places where people like to stay, that tend to give fewer conflicts with the shop owners, the local residents, and all parties experience more security. Today, our, our, today the reality is that our knowledge about socially excluded persons, uses of the city, is sporadic and based on vague assumptions. There is little or no systematic knowledge about socially excluded persons' use and whereabouts in the city. Even occasional surveys have shown that socially excluded persons very often go to places we are not aware about in the city government. Technology and data can help us in that respect. This initiative is rather unique in working with social excluded group, and our experience will share, be shared in our network, international and national, so it can help to ensure cities across Europe with security, equality, and decency for all citizens. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.